morning, Mr. Adams. Hello, Jim. Morning, Jim. Hi, Bill. Busy? Never too busy to talk with the press. Pull up a chair. Thanks. Well, I just dropped over to see if you could give me any more dope on the Tom Gordon story. You know, something that didn't come out of the banquet last night. Sure I could, Bill, but you wouldn't want to print most of it. Well, what do you mean? Well, you know Tom Gordon as well as I do. Swell fella, give you the shirt off his back but slow to change his way of doing things. He was one of the last farmers to sign up in the Zumbro Soil Conservation District. He sure went to work after he got started. You mean they went to work after they got started. That boy Ralph furnished most of the steam. Sounded like it at the banquet last night. Yeah, Ralph's been wanting to get started for the last three years, ever since he joined the future farmers at high school. He's been attending most of the conservation meetings keeping his ears open. He was at that meeting in January when I had a group. I think we all can be proud of the progress made in this district last year. And when we consider that 10 years ago, very little had been done, and today more than 80% of the acreage is under approved practices, we can be proud of our long pull accomplishments. Now, if there are no more questions, no one has anything more to say, the meeting is adjourned. Jim, we certainly appreciate the work you've done for us. You fellas did the work. Could I see a minute, Mr. Crandall? Sure, Ralph. What's on your mind? Well, I tried to get Dad to come along tonight, but as usual, he had something else on. He's a hard one to handle, isn't he, Ralph? You know it. We've both been working on him for years. It's getting embarrassing to be one of the few in the district not signed up. Don't let it bother you, Ralph. Your father is an individualist, and if he doesn't want to go along, that's his privilege. Thank goodness we still have that right in this country. And if we stay at it, I believe we can show him where he'd be money ahead if he did adopt a soil conservation plan. If he'd just been here tonight and heard these reports, he'd have been sold. Well, let's concentrate on getting him here to the February meeting. The regional director is coming to give a talk. Say, that's a good idea. What should I do to help? Just leave it to me. I'll call you when I want you. Okay, Mr. Crandall, I'll do anything you say. So I got three or four neighbors to casually invite Tom to the February meeting. And I happened to meet him on the street a couple of times and suggested that Ralph and he would enjoy hearing Bradley's talk. Kept boring in, eh? <laughs> yes. And the day before the meeting, I saw Ralph and told him to be sure his dad stayed home that night. I was going to make a telephone call and I wanted to... Why don't you answer it, Ralph? Ninety percent of the calls are for you anyway. Yeah, excuse me, Dad. I hardly heard it. I was so tangled up in these figures. I hope it isn't Billy wanting to go into town again tonight. Probably little Peggy Brown. Hello. Hello, Ralph. Yes, Mr. Crandall. Your dad there. Yes, he is. Well, just a minute, please. Dad. What's he want this time of night? Hello, Jim. Fine, fine. And since you and Bradley were classmates at State College, we want you to sit by him at the speaker's table. Oh, no, Jim. I can't make any speeches, you know that. <laughs> we don't want you to talk. Just help us make Bradley feel at home. No, I can't do it, Jim. Uh, my back's been bothering me. Uh, besides, I, uh, I promised Pete Nelson I'd come over and look at some seed oats tomorrow evening. But, Dad, you've got to go. What's that? But the committee thought you'd come this once when Bradley's here. 
Oh, it's the committee, eh? Well, now, just let me tell you what I think of that committee. Ralph, how'd you know what Crandall was talking about? Well, I really didn't. You knew I... he was going to call, didn't you? Well, yes and it's no. It's a frame-up. That's what it is, a frame-up to get me to that soil conservation meeting. Well, I'm not going to have any part of it. Imagine them inviting me to sit at the speaker's table. They know blame well I'm not interested in their program. They know I've got plenty of good reasons for staying out. And I'm going to stay out, too. Nobody's going to trick me into doing Tom something. Tom Gordon. Like... Huh? Come here and sit down before you burst a blood vessel. Yeah, Dad, don't get so excited. Oh, I can't help it. I'm sorry, but I, I just can't help it. Now you listen to me for a while. For 10 years, you've refused to cooperate with your neighbors in a soil conservation program that's helping everyone but us. Well, I haven't really refused, Mother. It's just that You've I... just found excuses time after time. And the silliest one I've heard is the one that your father and your grandfather made a living off this farm, and you're not going to change things. Well, that's dead right, too. But, Dad... Now, just let me handle this, Ralph. I've listened to you two argue till I'm just tired of it all. Now, Tom, there's absolutely no excuse for going on this way. You know and I know we're losing top soil every year. Why, it'll just... <laughs> Ralph told me his mother really laid it on the line. She accomplished in 10 minutes what the whole neighborhood couldn't do in 10 years. What's that about a woman's wrath? I don't remember. But it sure produced results. Did Tom go to the meeting the next night? He sure did. And got a big kick out of meeting his old friend Bradley. Next day, he came in and signed up. Ralph came along, too, just to be sure his dad didn't take a detour. I can see what you meant when you said I wouldn't want to print the whole story. When I went out in early spring to start preliminary surveys, Tom wasn't around. But Ralph and I looked the farm over and decided what needed to be done. One of the fields lay nicely with gently undulating slopes. We walked down across one corner that had been put into hayland because sheet erosion had taken off most of the good topsoil. It had rained the night before and washed a lot of topsoil down the slope. There it lay, the golden fleece off the hillside. The runoff cut gashes 10 to 14 inches deep, the kind that some farmers don't worry about but they're the kind that grow into big gullies in a hurry and leave scars in the face of the land. On the corner of the hayfield, there was a small gully that had to be filled. There was plenty of work to be done, so we hurried up the soil survey. I worked out a cropping and rotation plan with Ralph and made up a plat of the farm. Ever see one of the land use maps we make for every farm? No, I haven't, Jim. Well, this is a map of the Gordon farm. Here's the terrace near the top of the slope. Here are your contour lines. And this is the gully that needed filling. When I took a copy of this map out to Gordon's, I was pointing out the cropping plan to Tom and Ralph. This is a strip of corn along the terrace, then a strip of small grain and meadow, then the soybeans, and the meadow again. It all looks well to me, Mr. Crandall. Looks plumb silly to me, working around in circles, a little strip of this and a little strip of that, turning up dead subsoil to make terraces. You know, we haven't done too bad with the fields the way they are. Sure, Dad, but we can do better if we'll just give these plans a chance. Well, maybe, maybe so. Well, anyway, we're into it, so let's do it right. Well, that's the spirit, Tom. I'll help Ralph get started today. From then on, he's on his own. Well, it's a cinch I wouldn't be much help. I'd get dizzy going around those curves. <laughs> well, let's go, Ralph. We surveyed and staked the field for a terrace near the top of the slope. As we worked, Ralph was learning too, so that he could locate contour lines on his own. He went back for the tractor and disc tiller, and while I walked ahead pulling the stakes we'd set, Ralph made his first cut on the new terrace. That boy had studied the job so thoroughly, he threw that terrace ridge up like a veteran. 
I know I was proud of the way he did it. That happens all the time, Bill. Farmers build good terraces with ordinary tillage tools, such as disc tillers and moldboard plows. You don't have to have special equipment to do a good job of conservation farming. When we looked over the finished job, we knew it was just the ticket. Next, we went to work on the old gully that was getting too deep to cross with machinery in several places. Ralph rolled the dirt into that gully as if he'd been itching for the job a long time. You see, Bill, this is how you work it. You make cuts with the tiller back from the gully a ways on both sides, then just keep sweeping the loosened soil inward until the gullied area is smooth again. This gully was all the way from ankle deep to knee deep. I guess Ralph had most of it filled in after five or six rounds. Once he got it smoothed over, he seeded it down for a grassed waterway. That was called for in the plan, too. When Ralph got his crops in and they were ready to cultivate, it was a treat to watch that boy work. He kept insisting that I had to come out and see the transformation. When I finally got out there in July, I was really surprised myself. Where all those little gullies and sheet erosion had been, well, it was a beautiful sight to a conservation-minded man like me. Ralph was cultivating the corn and moving right along when Tom and I walked out through the field. How you doing? How am I doing, Mr. Crandall? Mighty good, I'd say, Ralph. The crops are the best I've seen. They're ahead of anything we've had in a long time. Oh, I wouldn't say that. About as usual. Maybe the weather's been better. Now, Dad, remember when I brought you out here after the last heavy rain? Remember how the terrace and every shovel mark around the contour was full of water? Well, yes, there was some water there. Most of it would have run for the low spots, then on down the slope, carrying topsoil with it, just as it has for years. Now it soaks in up here, where the crops are, where it does some good. He's right, Tom. You can't farm square in a round country and keep the moisture and topsoil where they should be. <sighs> By golly, you fellas sure stick together, don't you? But what I want to see is the final payoff. How much oats, corn, and soybeans are we going to take off this 40? I want to see if all this monkey business is worthwhile. That's what I want to see. Well, Tom's eyes were opened by the increased yields of first year, to say nothing of the topsoil that was saved. Now, don't tell me he made the 100 bushel club just like that. No, no, there weren't any miracles. But the oats made eight bushels over the state average. And at corn picking time, Tom got a real surprise. They got 10 bushels to the acre more than that field had produced for years, simply because the moisture was there when the crop needed it. I suppose those increased yields had a lot to do with Gordon winning the district award. Sure they did. But the committee considers other things too, such as overall improvement in the farm program and follow through on the cropping plan. That was all brought out last night. Yes, I got that. Well, then you've got the whole story, both printable and unprintable, excepting... Uh, excepting what? Excepting what happened the last half hour before the Gordons started to town for the banquet last night. Knowing Tom as I do, I'd like to have been there. Gentlemen <laughs> and ladies. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great honor to be chosen. It's a great honor to have been chosen. Uh, Farmer of the Year. Uh, by the Zumbro Soil, by the Zumbro Soil Convers... By the Zumbro Soil Con... Oh, why did I ever let Jim Crandall talk me into making this acceptance speech? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, friends and neighbors, uh, I have long been a firm believer in soil saving. Uh, and in accepting this reward... Award. In accepting this award, I do so for the whole Zumbro Conservation District. It's pretty good. Uh, friends and neighbors, I, I'm... Friends and neighbors, I... Friends and neighbors, I... Friends and neighbors, I...
Friends and neighbors, I... Friends and neighbors, I'm stuck. Tom. Yes, Mother. We have to leave here in five minutes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm almost ready now. I have to get this speech together. First, let's see. One, two, three. Page four. Where's page four? Well, where'd you have it? Where in the world is page four? Here it is. Four. So, we find in selling good management of the soil, the men who sell themselves are the ones who really stay so. They're the ones who do a fine job. Once they start a soil conservation plan on their own farms. And so, it gives me great pleasure, Tom, on behalf of the Board of Supervisors and members of the Zumbro Soil Conservation District, to present to you this award, which is emblematic of your being chosen our Farmer of the Year. Jim and ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to have been chosen Farmer of the Year. But since I got here, I've been thinking that I shouldn't be receiving this award at all because I had so very little to do with winning it. My son, Ralph, is the one who really deserves the credit. So I'm going to give the award to him and let him accept it as he wishes. <laughs> yes, sir. That's well. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Dad. I really don't know what to say. You see, Dad had the speech all written out there. <laughs> But we want to thank you sincerely for the honor. We were a little slow getting started, but we've seen what can be done in only one year's time. You can be sure we'll stay with it and do everything recommended by Mr. Crandall and his men. Now, Dad said I deserve the credit for winning this award, but I want to introduce a person who really got us started, gave us encouragement, and kept us working. I think she should be named Farm Mother of the Year. My mom. Oh. <laughs>